Hi everyone, I'm Yasmin. Welcome to The Blind Spot. Today we'll be talking to Raj Gill, activist, socialist, member of the Labour Party Momentum and Unite, about what it means to be an activist. So, first things first, what does it mean to you to be an activist? I think uh, being an activist, it's to do with people's concerns, uh, what's happening, uh, it could be an individual concern, it could be a collective concern. Uh, active means that you're trying to help somebody, whether you're helping somebody to cross the road, dear old lady, or you are uh, helping somebody to uh, propel change. Uh, for instance, if, there, if there's no lollipop ladies at the primary uh, school, then you're campaigning uh, for the safety of uh, children and uh, parents alike. Uh, and it could well be some safety issues in terms of zebra crossing. It could well be simply completely different um, in terms of uh, environment, uh, in terms of trying to defend your local hospital uh, accident emergency from closure mm. or trying to prevent the maternity unit uh, being closed. Uh, it could be many things. It's about people's concerns and what you are prepared to do uh, in order to propel that change. Um, people can uh, hear things and then not do anything about those. Act, uh, being activists, you're, you are not only concerned about issues, you're prepared to do something about it. And, you know, other than the uh, things I mentioned, it could well be about disabilities. It could be um, um, disabled access on uh, the tubes or the underground. It could be disabled access uh, or other things to do with um, if people are attending function or meeting, it could, could well be that they don't hear. Uh, and I think uh, we need for local authorities, we need other people in power to start thinking about how they can help, how we can contribute in terms of propelling that change. Mm. An activist is about possibly uh, mobilizing people to get them to sign petitions or um, having a demonstration if it requires. But activism is not just about holding up placards and shouting. It's about uh, working out a best way of affecting that change. Yeah. Well, obviously, Political and community activism, uh, you know, is a very important part of your life. Uh, how did you get started? Well, it goes back a very long time when I was actually at college in um, uh, Hunslow. Um, I was in college, Arzelworth Polytechnic College. And uh, I saw the news about the war which was happening far away, land, uh, Vietnam and uh, the Americans carpet bombing um, the, uh, the foreign country and uh, how people were suffering and I think my first act uh, was when I went on a demonstration to stop the war in Vietnam mm. so that's how I really got started. So what in your opinion is the left? I mean the term's used a lot in the media, uh, we hear it a lot, but how would you describe it? Yeah, I think left um, is, comes from ideology. Um, if you look at it in the simplest form, you've got two uh, sections of society. One is a capitalist society, one is um, socialism. Uh, I think uh, left comes from the perspective that uh, equality for majority of people comes first before profit, uh, before um, 
before individuality. I think uh, left comes from a stream of Marxism. It goes right back towards the 18th century and 19th century uh, to the French Revolution and uh, to the Chartist movement in this country and how people took idea from Marx and Engels and Lenin and how the socialism started as opposed to uh, monarchy, uh, as opposed to people who are wealthy landowners and um, uh, it's basically between the Republican uh, and uh, the, the, the Royalists. That's how it started and I think uh, as it moved on in uh, the 19th century and onwards it became uh, a fight for justice. Uh, not locally, not by local issue, but internationally. So left comes from that perspective. He's trying to look after uh, underprivileged poor people, or people who are the majority uh, in this country, the 99%, not the 1%. So the left traditionally comes from that strand of the movement. So obviously the uh, Labour Party is, you know, your preferred <laughs> preferred choice. Uh, what, you know, what, would you consider it to be a left a left wing party in its totality? Yeah, I think uh, the Labour Party, uh, even if you go to the old Labour Party, to the foundation of the Labour Party, that is formed by the trade union movement. Uh, the Labour Party was formed out of the need to represent a community which wasn't, wasn't represented uh, at the time. And I think things have changed over the years. Uh, Labour Party from becoming into being due to the movement of working class and workers to a time where it actually supported uh, foreign wars uh, imperialist wars to the time it became uh, a kind of left party and then it moved right to the time when Tony Blair came in it moved further to the right and I think now with the uh, election of Jeremy Corbyn as a Labour Party leaders uh, and the desire of rank and file members for change, change which means they want uh, equality. All those things that Marxist or the left wanted in the early years is now come back into fashion and the greed and uh, neoliberalist agenda has now um, really is being confined to history. I think uh, people are more concerned about uh, inequalities and trying to change that. So there are uh, laws which uh, are, are kind of uh, strengthened. I mean, over the years we had uh, sex equality and we had improved the legislation to the Labour government and we had a minimum wage uh, we had uh, trade union um, rights uh, and uh, obviously we had uh, welfare in this country and we had uh, uh, NHS. All of these things were something which was give, given to us. It was something that the working class trade union movement, labour movement fought and um, the Labour Party has been the party which has actually implemented some of this change. Uh, sometimes reluctantly, sometimes we need, needed to put more pressure on them to do so. But I think we, we have in Jeremy Corbyn a friend of the working class who is much more prepared to be controversial, to examine all the issues uh, and uh, uh, try to find an answers. I think that's why 
now after the election of Jeremy Corbyn, we have momentum. Momentum is going to be there to uh, try to work through some ideas, uh, uh, positive ideas to resolve some of the issues and, and uh, uh, compel the Labour Party to put forward some socialist policy and to recognise the fact it's not, uh, it's not a party of the Liberals, it's not a party of the ruling class, it's a party of ordinary working people and uh, communities. And I think the, uh, I'm really encouraged by the fact that Jeremy Corbyn now uses the word uh, socialism. And people shouldn't be afraid to use the word socialism. If they were equally using the word equality, then socialism could be well under, uh, understood. It's, it's the use of words now, because some of the words have been stigmatized by the capitalist media and, and they turned positive or socialism into negative activity. So if we address some of these issues from a uh, point of view of uh, uh, quality, uh, fairness, and I think we're going to reach out much more. I think we need, um, there's a lot of issues sorting out in the world, not only about the war uh, and the positive role such as Stop the War has played against interventions um, in the Middle East, uh, and, and Syria and other places. Uh, it's other issue, which is an environment issue, uh, that the world is now, to a certain extent, being poisoned due to the CO2. And what we don't realise that we are going to get extreme weathers. And I think governments are ill-prepared. Uh, I think uh, uh, we need in in, in, uh, in socialist uh, parties, or Labour Party, in, in other uh, organisations, trade union, in order to raise the political consciousness of people and really alert them to the dangers. I mean, there's other dangers which everybody's aware in terms of the 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 European uh, uh, trade uh, agreement, the TTIP which mean privatisation of uh, social services. All those things we um, um, said or believe in were dear to us uh, are being slowly destroyed uh, to privatisation, to capital. And we go back to the same of old uh, kind of uh, tradition. What do we want our society to be? We want it it to be that the highest bidder in the land, big corporations, uh, big business, control our daily lives, or we want uh, a society which is uh, equal uh, and um, uh, in terms of uh, fairness. And if that is what we want, then we are fundamentally talking about socialism. How do you think that people can affect change? People can affect change by getting involved, whatever level they want to get involved. It could be just basically um, getting uh, involved in writing petitions. It could well be on the social media. It could well be uh, other, other form of um, um, you know uh, protest. Um, there's many ways people get can get involved. Um, you know, it's not defined. They have to. They have to get involved in one way or another. So there's, there's many. And we have the social media now, which is uh, something that young people find easy uh, uh, to uh, kind of log on to. You know, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have um, uh, WhatsApp, and we have all sorts of other things we can use. I think. We need uh, for us to make the link between the older generation and young people. I think society is set up in a way that uh, young people 
are not seen as adults. They are seen as people who doesn't have a political voice. A lot of young people, 16 onwards, sometimes even younger than that, do read the news, they do see what's happening. So it's, you know, it's about time young people did get the vote uh, and we engage with people at their level, whether it's about free education, whether it's about their youth club being closed, uh, all sorts of other things. I think um, um, it's no longer the issue of uh, young people and parents, and there's always that kind of uh, a barrier. I think we need to break down all barriers, and we need to become proactive. And people can get can get involved. I mean, I mean, I'm involved. Um, uh, not only as a disabled activist, I mean, I do a lot of work with DPAC and being a branch secretary of the Ealing United Community branch, I come into contact with a lot of people with disabilities whose benefits have been cut on occasions. I've represented them at, on a casework level or even somebody's been dismissed from work or made redundant help them, help them to understand that they have legal rights, help them to understand that uh, employer doesn't always have the upper hand. Uh, and, and I think it's important um, people start to exercise their freedom and their rights. I think that's important. I, I think uh, I think we can unite whole sectors section of society, uh, young, old, black, white, whatever colour. And I think all this um, kind of anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant agenda that press has, uh, uh, that need to be countered. I think we can do that together. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of ways people can, can get involved. We've spoken about the Labour Party uh, what do you think of other left-wing political parties? I mean, we've spoken about socialism. Uh, many people don't consider Labour to be a socialist party. Yeah, I think um, certainly there's a room for other other political parties to have opinion. I think mean, where things differ is practicality how they would do things. Uh, and um, I mean, not only now, going back history, uh, the labor movement has split into various factions. Going back to even the time of the Russian revolutions in 1917, between Bolsheviks and uh, Mensheviks, um, and one group uh, wanted uh, it to be done as a reformist through, uh, uh, if you would like, parliamentary means, and the other wanted to do uh, as as kind of a social movement, uh, direct action. Uh, we can do, draw different uh, conclusions from the history. I think there is always um, room for new ideas. At the end of the day, I think, um, although I would have agreed with some of the parties that the Labour Party wasn't um, a revolutionary party, which is correct. I mean, uh, even the, the, the strand of the Labour Party started from the Fabian Society, and its society started from the cooperative movements. And then you had various forms of revolutionary movement. I think. Nowadays, I think if you are going to affect change, it has to be a combustion of social movement and political movement. And I think the other parties are much smaller and they're much more ideological based groups arguing about one particular theory 
against another theory. Uh, and I think nowadays you have to be a bit more pragmatic, a bit more uh, focused. And I think the Labour Party, uh, under, under Jeremy Corbyn, and uh, I wouldn't have agreed uh, that was the case under Tony Blair or any other uh, kind of uh, leadership under Jeremy Corbyn. He wants to unite people who are activists uh, and uh, trade unionists, uh, people who have a different uh, opinion, uh, whether it's a social opinion or political opinion, he wants to unite all the movement into one and uh, hopefully affect change. It's about affecting change, about getting uh, elected as local councillors, about like, uh, getting elected as MPs. And I, th I think that's uh, the difference between just arguing about theory, uh, but we need to put into practice what we preach. And I think at the moment the Labour Party is, is the only vehicle by which we can effectively um, implement change. Okay, well thank you Raj for your unique insight into community activism. I'm sure this won't be the last time we hear from you. Thank you.